So after I did the video on the Lookfox Pico, the easiest way to jailbreak your PS4 on 11.00. Quite a few people were asking, how can you do it from the NAND itself? So you don't need an SD card. Well, in this video, we're going to go through all of those steps. So without further delay, let's dive in. So the device we're going to be using in this video is the same one we used before, the Pico Pro Max. And yes, it was installed in my PS4, but I've taken it out because I'm going to have a few more devices to test real soon. But you can follow this guide if you have a Plus or a Pro. So this covers all three of those devices. Now, if you do have one of the Pico Minis, so that's either the Mini A or the Mini B, then I'm going to be doing a separate video next week. So I've got a Mini B and of course it doesn't have an Ethernet port, but we're going to solder wires directly to some pads and that will be the same if it's internal or external. Now the Mini B does have 128 megabytes of built-in NAND, so in my opinion that's the better device to get because the Mini A doesn't have a NAND built-in, so you're going to have to use an SD card adding to the cost. So if you are going to do an internal install, get the Mini B and then wait till next week when I'll be doing a full video because flashing the NAND, there's a couple of extra steps you need to do for the Mini B that you don't have to do on the Plus, Pro or Max. So just before we jump on over to the PC and get this process started, I want to remind you guys of the official Alien Gaming Etsy shop. So if you want to grab yourself one of these really cool cases for your Plus, Pro or Max, hop on over and check them out. We've got loads of different colors and then real soon, we're going to have a limited glass edition and it looks fantastic. So go and check the Etsy shop the link is in the description and I'm also going to be designing a case for the Mini B as well. So a lot smaller device, but still a case would be nice to put it in, especially if it's external. Right, let's jump on over to the PC and get this process started. So in the description below, the first link you'll find is for these drivers. They're the AK Driver Assistant. Now, I'm not 100% sure if you need it for this video, but you will need it if you ever want to sort of reflash the NAND if you run into issues. So we're going to install it anyway to be on the safe side because it's just a tiny little driver. It's not going to do any harm. So as you can see, we've got driver install.exe. So we're just going to copy this across to the desktop to make it nice and easy on ourselves. There we go. Once that's copied across, we're going to open it up. Look for that driver install.exe. And then we're going to double click on it. You will get this warning. Just click run anyway. Your screen will go black. You'll have another warning. Just click allow. So here we go, nice and simple, two buttons. Click on install driver and you'll see that is it done. So it is a very small driver. Click OK and then we can just close all this down. So what you need to do now is connect your Lookfox to the PC with the USB-C to USB cable. Now if you open up your network and internet connections, you're going to see that there's an unidentified network and you know it's the right one because it will say remote NDIS. So if you right click on it, you won't have a tick mark here under Internet Protocol version 4, but double click on it and then what you'll see is this here. So what you want to do is use the following IP addresses. For the IP address, you want to type in 172.032 zero 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 one hundred and then if you click on the subnet mask it'll auto populate to 255.255.0.0 so then click ok and then ok again now that's that part done the next link in the description you want to download this here moba extreme so download this file here and this is the software we're going to use to sort of remote into the Lookfox Pico. 
So once that's downloaded, just extract it to your desktop, somewhere easy for you to find it. So next we're going to double click on it and open it up. Now this might look daunting to you, but don't worry too much, we're going to go through it all. What I'm actually doing here is I'm just deleting my previous sessions, just so I can show you guys from the beginning. So we're going to click on session, SSH, and then we need the remote host IP address. So you're going to type in 172.32.0.93, not the 100 that I assumed would be the one that we would use, but it's not, it is 93. Click OK, you'll get this message pop up, just hit accept. So it's going to ask you to log in. So the login username is root, R -O, o T, and the password is lookfox, L-U-C-K-F-O-X. It'll ask you if you want to remember the password, just hit no. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add some files to the lookfox. So we're going to bring up the main guide itself. And if you have a look under step eight, you'll see the PPPWN lookfox sort of install files. So we're going to download these. And then once you have them, open that zip file and extract it to your desktop. Now we're going to have to rename this. So once you've got it on your desktop, we can close that down, right click on it and then click rename. Now, if you hit the right arrow, it will go to the end. Just delete hyphen main. So it should read PPPWN hyphen lookfox, just as you see here. Now what we want to do is grab this folder and then dump it in this window here. So what that's going to do, it's going to copy it across to the lookfox. So that's brilliant. That's on the root of the lookfox. Now what we need to do is go back to the guide and just under, under step nine, you're going to want to copy these commands. So just hit copy, go back over here, right click, and it will say you're about to paste these lines, hit OK, and then push enter. Now you're probably familiar with these steps if you've seen my other video, but they have changed. So make sure you watch the whole thing. Now, of course, I have version 11.00, which is E. So we're going to type in E here. Are you sure this is version 11.00? Is that correct? Well, yeah, it's correct. Do you want your lock fox to shut down after successfully jailbreaking? Yes or no? I'm going to select yes here because I do want it to do that. Please select the PPPWN executable you want to use. Now, I've never used the IPv6 version. The normal version has always worked for me. So I'm going to choose A for this one here. And then it's going to say you've selected the following settings firmware 1100, the PPPWN executable shut down after jailbreak. Is this all correct? Just push Y. Yes. And that's it. It's done. The Lookfox will reboot and it's ready to use on your PS4. So as you can see, it's not as difficult as you think. And of course, you can then sort of remote into the device to do the last final steps. So there's no need to connect it to your router like we did before. And of course, in the description of this video is all the links and downloads that you're going to need. So I'm going to end the video here. But don't forget, if you enjoy my content, there's a button down there that says like and there's another one that says subscribe. And don't forget to tinkle that bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Because next week, I'm going to be using the Mini B. And of course, we're going to be making a case for it. It's going to look really cool. I'm JP. You've been watching Alien Gaming. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.